Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 7 o'clock main news. In tonight's headlines, His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah arrives in London on a private visit. Israel resumes its aggression on the Gaza Strip with at least 10 airstrikes after the end of a 72 hour ceasefire. The Pentagon says a U.S. aircraft launched an airstrike against militants near Erbil in northern Iraq. And former Lebanese Prime Minister Saad al-Hadid returns unexpectedly to Beirut for the first time in three years. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah, along with the Deputy Chief of the National Guard Sheikh Mishal Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah and his accompanying delegation, arrived today noon in the United Kingdom on a private visit. His Highness the Emir was received at the airport by the former National Assembly Speaker Jassim Mohammed Al Khrafi, Sheikh Shamlan Abdul Aziz Al Subah, Sheikh Ahmed Al Hamoud Al Jabir Al Subah, Kuwait's Ambassador to the United Kingdom Khalid Abdul Aziz Al Dwaysan, members of the Kuwaiti Embassy, and officials from the Kuwaiti bureaus accredited to the United Kingdom. Injured Palestinians were being brought to a hospital in Gaza City today after Israel resumed its aggression on Gaza. A 10-year-old boy was killed and five other people injured by an Israeli airstrike in northern Gaza City. Elsewhere in Gaza, worshippers gathered for Friday prayers outside a mosque that was recently destroyed by an airstrike. Israel launched at least 10 airstrikes a day after a three-day truce expired and talks brokered by Egypt on a new border deal with the, for the blockaded coastal territory hit a deadlock. In Israel, police said two people were hurt by rocket fire. Two senior Hamas officials said the Palestinian resistance movement will not extend a 72-hour ceasefire in Gaza that expired today, accusing Israel of rejecting their demands for a truce. Mom with Meshed al from Gaza. No progress in the ceasefire talks. Today, it seems that the only progress is a step back. Israeli delegation has left Egypt with Hamas refusing to extend the three-day truce. Hamas blamed Israel, saying it had not replied to its ceasefire offer. It also threatened that there would be an escalation in hostilities if Israel failed to submit to their demands, which first and foremost called to open a seaport to the blockaded enclave. Now we are in a new phase of confrontation between the resistance faction in Gaza and the Israeli occupation. They will fulfill the attempt in Cairo. However, I think this worsening situation won't turn into a ground operation, but will remain a limited war. Israel will use a strike. Resistance faction will keep resisting but may use other alternatives. Just hours after a ceasefire between the two sides expired, Israel hit the Gaza Strap with missiles and artillery for the first time in three days, while Palestinian fighters fired a barrage of rockets at Israel. This comes amid a war of threats. For Hamas and Islamic Jihad, the battle is still wide open as long as there is an Israeli occupation and siege. The Palestinian resistance faction are fighting a battle to defend the Palestinian people. The, this battle is for liberation and the freedom. The Zionist enemy is the one who started the aggression. We say that the battle is ongoing until there is an end to this occupation. If Israel doesn't respond, all options will remain open. Indeed, all options are possible now. Here, the streets are almost empty, with civilians fleeing their homes again, seeking shelters in places they think are safe. This is definitely a dark time for those who seek peace and stability. 
after the break from war came to an end, many are still wondering what is next. However, people here say that they are not emotionally ready for a new round of devastation and bloodshed. Majlou Hadi, Kuwait TV, Gaza. The United States said it has launched an airstrike against militants in northern Iraq. The Pentagon said American aircraft attacked artillery that was being used against Turkish forces defending the northern city of Erbil. A number of U.S. personnel are based in Erbil. President Barack Obama authorized airstrikes earlier but said he would not send U.S. troops back to Iraq. Obama said the Iraqi government had requested assistance and the U.S. would act carefully and responsibly to prevent a potential act of genocide against people in that region. Former Lebanese Prime Minister Saad al-Hadid returned unexpectedly to Beirut today after three years living away from Lebanon. Al-Hadid arrived in Beirut and made his way immediately, immediately to the office of Prime Minister Tamam Islam. His unannounced return comes amid heightened tensions in the country after militants overran Arsal, a town on the eastern Lebanon border, making the first wide-scale incursion by Syrian rebels into the country. The fighters withdrew on Thursday, but there are concerns that the violence could break out again. Up to 1,500 Syrian refugees who are among those trapped in a Lebanese town that was overrun by militants over the weekend were crossing the border back to Syria as a ceasefire appeared to hold. A senior Lebanese security official said the majority of the militants had withdrawn by mid-Thursday. Up to 150 cars packed with Syrian refugees were seen leaving Arsal. The seizure of the Lebanese border town of Arsal over the weekend marked the first time that militants from Syria carried out a large-scale incursion into Lebanon and raised fears of a further spillover of the conflict across the porous, the porous border. Millions of Turks will go to the polls on Sunday to elect their next president, Turkey's 12th president, who will become the first to be directly elected by voters instead of by parliament. Three men are vying for the post, among them the undisputed front-runner Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan from the Justice and Development Party, who will be confronted by two other candidates. Mild-mannered scientist and academic Ekmel Leddin Ihsanoglu is backed by about a dozen opposition parties, including two main ones, while Salahattin Demirtas, an ambitious young Turkish politician and lawyer, is running on behalf of the left wing. A candidate needs absolute majority to win, and if none wins enough ballots, a runoff will be held two weeks later on August 24th, when the candidate with the most votes wins. Afghanistan's rival presidential candidates today signed a deal to cooperate on the formation of a government of national unity. One of the candidates, Ashraf Ghani, confirmed the deal at a news conference following meetings with the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry today. A joint declaration that both of the candidates signed didn't provide details on the government's framework, except to say that both sides would form a commission to work on its structure. Earlier, Kerry met Afghan President Hamid Karzai and the top two Afghan presidential candidates. Kerry arrived in Afghanistan on Thursday for his second visit in less than a month to push a deal between the, the country's two presidential candidates on how to share power after an audit of a disputed election is complete. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. The World Health Organization, or, or WHO, has declared the spread of Ebola in West Africa an international health emergency. WHO officials said today that a coordinated international response was essential to stop and reverse the spread of the virus. The announcement came after experts convened a two-day emergency meeting in Switzerland. More than 1,700 cases of Ebola have been reported in Guinea, Liberia, Nigeria and Sierra Leone, while so far more than 960 people have died from Ebola in West Africa this year. Pakistan has handed back an Indian soldier who was swept by a river into Pakistani-controlled territory in Kashmir. He had crossed the line of control, the de facto border dividing the disputed Kashmir region. He was part of a team of soldiers patrolling the Shenab River on Wednesday when the incident took place. A senior official of India's border security force said the soldier was trying to climb into a boat in the surging Chenab when he slipped and was carried away by the strong current. Reports said Pakistani soldiers detained and questioned the soldier before deciding to hand him back today to India. 
Government forces in eastern Ukraine have lost 15 soldiers within a day as they push against pro-Russian rebels in the Donetsk and Luhansk region. The government declared that 15 were killed and 79 injured today, two days after 18 were killed, the highest daily death toll reported in weeks. Around 1,500 people, both civilians and fighters, have been killed since Ukraine's new government sent forces into the east in April to put down an armed uprising by the separatists. Meanwhile, investigators in Russia today announced the arrest of five Ukrainian army officers for alleged war crimes as fighting rages in eastern Ukraine. The officers from Ukraine's 72nd Mechanized Brigade are reportedly among hundreds of soldiers who crossed into Russia to flee from pro-Russian rebels. Foreign ministers from member countries of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, today gathered in Myanmar's capital, Nai Pai Dao, marking the 47th ASEAN Day. Myanmar President Yu Then Sin delivered a keynote address. The annual ASEAN Foreign Ministers Meeting brings together foreign ministers from ASEAN member countries and their counterparts from dialogue partner countries to discuss political, security and development issues that have significant impacts on the region. The three-day meeting will deliberate on community building, efficiency and co coherence of ASEAN institutions, ASEAN's external relations and its centrality in the evolving regional architecture, regional and international issues and developments of common concern. On Saturday, ASEAN foreign ministers will meet with their counterparts from the bloc's dialogue partners from all over the world. Malaysia's state investment firm Hazana National has proposed a complete overhaul of troubled national carrier Malaysia Airlines. Hazana plans to buy a, the, its share that doesn't share that it doesn't already own in Malaysia's airlines and delist the carrier. Malaysian Prime Minister uh, Najib Razak said he agreed with the state's funds decision. The airline has been hurt by two major tragedies, the crash of flight MH17 in Ukraine and the disappearance of flight MH370 in recent months, triggering concerns about the airline's future. For a chance to see our reports again, please visit our YouTube channel at MOI Quake News. And to recap tonight's news, hear the headlines once again. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah arrives in London on a private visit. Israel resumes its aggression on the Gaza Strip with at least 10 airstrikes after the end of a 72 hour ceasefire. The Pentagon says a U.S. aircraft launched an airstrike against militants near Irbil in northern Iraq. And former Lebanese Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri returns unexpectedly to Beirut for the first time in three years. Thank you for joining us.